Don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> Dear Shandy. Welcome back to another Dear Shandy Bachelor in Paradise recap, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? No, that really sucked. <laughs> Yeah. First, let's get out of the way before we recap. I mean, I don't even know if we can call it a recap. It's, it's a recap. It's a recap. Oh re-crap. my god, the recap is back. Yeah, this is this is a classic recap. Yes, we want this show to be good. Everyone wins if it's good, right? Everyone. Everyone. We're entertained watching it. Their numbers are going to go up instead of down. Yeah. It's good for us and our numbers. Are good for everyone if the show yeah. is good. Yes. Why good. Do they, they should aim for good. Yes. Someone decent. should bring that up in a meeting. <laughs> Good. No, it's true. It just feels like they are relying on the same old playbook and they don't realize that their audience is evolving way past them and that there are other options. Yeah, They're trying to structure the show more and more and more. Mm hmm. But they don't understand a good structure. Yeah. And the show <laughs> thrives on the lack of structure. Yes, uh, yes, exactly. Okay. But before we really let our thoughts known, hmm. be known. I think our thoughts are known already. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think we have the cats we, out of that bag. Before we let our thoughts be known in detail, do yeah. we have any housekeeping to get to? No. We're going to have a lot of mopping up, though. <laughs> I don't know if that counts as housekeeping. Sweeping. Yeah. Taking sweeping, out the trash. Yeah. Plunging toilets. <laughs> All right, so episode two. So this is the first of two episodes. We get our first glimpse of the opening credits of the Almost Paradise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our favorites were Michael's barbecuing. Yeah. And, and Justin's painting with the funny expression. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we thought those were good. good. Yeah. Okay. Serene is spraying sunscreen on Brandon. And I loved how he said, you are very thorough with sunscreen. <laughs> it's a cute thing to say. <laughs> yeah. I wish we saw more of that with the two of them. Yeah. Instead of them just making out. But okay, I'll yeah, take whatever. my battles. Haley now plays narrator and tells us who the established couples are so far. And they are, of course, Serene and Brandon, Andrew and Teddy, Hunter and Johnny, Genevieve and Justin. Shanae, quote, is kind of hanging out with Logan, unquote. Mm. And Lace is sitting in a corner by herself. Haley says they're at capacity with women. Mm -hmm. And of course, Genevieve says she hasn't talked to anyone else. Justin is it for her. She feels great about them. Dot, dot, dot. Cue Victoria F. So Jesse gives Victoria her date card. And as she heads in, the gist is that all the women are intimidated by yeah. her. And I can see why. I mean, sure. Victoria is very striking. Oh, yeah. And very confident. Mm -hmm. She oozes confidence and game. Yeah, she's a female Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. She ha She walks in there and she's like, I was meant to be here, even yeah. though she herself, I think she even said she's like, I can't believe I'm here. Yeah. She was really born for this. Oh, yeah. She owns the place. <laughs> so Victoria pulls Logan first. She says she noticed him right away. He says, well, thank you. We all noticed you. <laughs> she pulls Johnny. He calls her Caroline. <laughs> and they have a good little bit of banter over this. He calls her perfect. Yeah. Worth noting. And then she pulls Justin. They talk briefly about Nashville and she ultimately invites him on her date and Genevieve looks pissed. And in her ITM, she cries, I'm going to lose Justin. There's going to be a lot of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Genevieve awkwardly bumps into Victoria and Justin as they're heading off to get ready for the date. And then she and Justin chat and he says he would want her to do the same thing. Basically, the gist is they should test their connection. And Genevieve is playing it very cool right now. She's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah you do you. But yeah. she's playing it cool. Inside is not cool. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, the temperature is not cool. No, yeah. I almost wonder if she did herself a disservice by playing it as cool as she did, considering how much of a betrayal it was to well, how she really felt. Well, it was a bluff that was called very quickly. Yes. Okay, so Victoria and Justin go on their date now. They drive. A dirt buggy, I think. Yeah, buggy something. Victoria says it's so much fun. He made her crack up the whole time. We really see almost none of this date, mm -mm. which is saying a lot, actually, yeah. because I think that's a worthwhile thing to see, considering all we saw of this episode pretty much was Genevieve unraveling. It's like, why don't we see more of why yeah. she's unraveling? Well, they only had four hours to work with. So. <laughs> So back at the beach, Genevieve chats with the women and claims that she would leave if Justin came back and was into Victoria. Mm. And thus begins a lot of Genevieve's uh, bluffing in yeah. general. Oh, There's yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. We see her cards. Yeah. She's she holding a, a, the classic two, three, four, <laughs> six, seven, not suited. <laughs> she spends pretty much all of these two episodes threatening to leave and then never actually leaving. Yeah. 
Yeah, she could take a page out of Teddy's book. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we'll get to that. Don't spoil. So back on the date, Victoria says that Justin doesn't take himself too seriously. Their humor is the same. It was a no-brainer to take him on this date. He says that when there's a connection, you just know it. And in his ITM, he seems pretty into her. But like I said, there isn't much else shown off this date. Back at the beach, Shanae and Kira chat now. Kira says that she feels like she's putting herself out there and not getting anything back. And that with the men, it's, quote, just weak energy. Yeah. And I got to say, I don't disagree with I her. Agree. I feel like we see this every season with Paradise. Is the guys are almost more and more and more passive, more and more and more into just hanging out with their friends. Yeah, it's a, is it a thing? Or like people, is the reason this show is starting to suck because just people are starting to suck a little more? <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell if this is what dating is like today. So this is when you get a bunch of, you know, 25 to 31 year old men, young, straight men who have had access to apps their whole life. When you get them all there in a dating situation, maybe this is just how it is. You don't get that much assertion. I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, but I'm starting to think this might be just a universal thing. Like the, like the show doesn't need a lot. Like I think, okay, this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to take the side of production. Okay. And say that they're being forced mm. to create contrivance because there's an absence of anything else. My guess is if they really felt like there was great chemistry and dynamism on the beach, mm -hmm. they dynamism. would just... Dynamism. That's a good word. <laughs> I'm trying to liven up this <laughs> shit fest. But if they thought that, they wouldn't have to, you know, put their hands in it. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have to use the strings. But so yeah, I guess it becomes, what would this look like without the strings? Would it be right. better? But then now I'm thinking, and again, I'm trying to play devil's advocate for production. Yeah. Maybe they were just like at their wit's end. They're like, God, this is nothing here. Yeah. Like, think about it. They're looking at, I mean, we saw it firsthand in Bachelor Paradise Canada. They're looking Karina. at <laughs> Bachelor, <laughs> um, the Canadian Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> They're looking at hundreds of hours of mm -hmm. footage from different angles, seven, eight cameras. I mean, it's just endless. Mm -hmm. Like maybe they're looking at all this and like, we don't have anything here. We have to do something to make this work. And they're doing things that don't work, but they know they're better than the things that aren't working, which is just letting it exist as an ecosystem. And my guess is that the world has gotten boring. Men are not allowed to say a lot of things That anymore. they would say to each other. That they yeah. would say. Um, there's a lot if of- If there were no cameras on them. If there were no cameras. Yeah. There's a lot of interaction between men and women now that are just, it's very different than it used to be. There's mm -hmm. a lot more care. There's a lot more like caution. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more just watching out what you do. Yes. And I think that that's not good for this scenario. If yeah. you go back to the first season of Bachelor in Paradise, first of all, the world has changed a lot since then. Yes. If you go back, it's just like, it was kind of like a hot mess in a good way. Yes. People were just all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now it feels like every, have you noticed that every conversation is more metered more careful, mm -hmm. more boring. Mm -hmm. It's and true. And I mean, I don't blame them because I would be the exact same way. You know, you see the the Brandon and the Pipers happening. Yeah. What made that so great was their, them forgetting that those hidden yes. cameras were on them. They were speaking the way they would if there were no cameras on them. Yeah. And it's harder and harder, I guess, to get people to do that yes. on TV, especially when they're limited to two drinks an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Only two drinks an hour. I mean, how can you possibly be loose? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're making a good point, though. I do wonder, and I swear I want to move on. We have so much to get to today. But I do wonder if the powers that be almost shoot themselves in the foot by trying to over manipulate things before things even happen right? so that they know that they have s certain talking points to work with. They're not willing to let it just unfold and see. Yeah, you know I, what I mean? They're well, not willing to go through those hundreds of hours of footage. They want to know where they're like, where their pins are that they can hang their hat on. Hmm. I look, I think all reality TV eventually becomes self-aware. Mm. And when it becomes self-aware, it's kind of just a, a slow slide down the backside yeah. of the hill no i can even feel that like i finally got watching love is blind and i was a little late to this party but i could even see the difference in season two versus season one based on how sincere everything was and you know season one people didn't really know what there was to be gained they didn't know that by making it all the way on that show they were going to walk away with one or two million followers on instagram right that affects season two which will in turn affect season three yes exactly you know, you're going to get a way more couples coming out of the pods in Love is Blind season three. You are. 
Of course. Yeah. It's more fun to go to safari than to see animals in a zoo. <laughs> good. Uh-huh. good. Yeah, that was not bad, uh-huh. actually. <laughs> Kira says that she's mainly interested in Casey, and now we see Casey and Michael chatting while walking down the beach. Mm. Casey says Kira's a bleeping mad woman. He tells Michael that she told him her love language is bleeping, we think. Yeah. I is think that fucking? Probably. You think? I think so. Because then he says... He claims there's no judgment, but he doesn't know her. And Andy said, I love this. You got to, you got, we're not into this. You Mm. said, I don't like that. And I said, what? And you said, I don't like when a woman puts herself out there sexually and a guy then talks about it negatively behind her back. Just keep it to yourself and say to her face, you're not interested or whatever. Don't brag and then slut shame her simultaneously to your friends. Yeah, I hate this. Yeah. And I look, I'm, I'm guilty of kissing and telling in my life. I've Kissing done it a million is times. Different it's me. different. It's yeah. Like this is what happened with this yeah, girl. Yeah, and like, and I'm like, sweet. I got. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm basically bragging about the things that happened with this girl, or yeah, just like I think you a know, lot of people do that. Yeah, and women do it too. But I would never say, "Oh, this girl was coming on to me so strong. How lame." Yeah, but it's not even she's coming on to me so strong. It's like she's coming on to me, and she was all sexual, and like she's too sexual for me. Like she's oh, like I I need a good girl. She's actually got great commentary and she's a great character to have on the show but watching him kind of judge her for coming on to him so strong made turn me off him in the end i agree and i think that you can to yourself be a little repulsed by someone coming on too strong but you should not air it out Totally. You should not speak about it, especially on national television. Yeah. Okay, so question to get back to what we were just talking about. Do you think Casey was being the good guy by having that conversation? Or do you think that he was really talking to Michael in a natural way where he forgot that cameras were on him? Um, I don't think he realized cameras were catching this. It's possible because he's been pretty measured yes. up until that Casey point. Casey has been measured. He's been more so the narrator this season. Yeah, I agree. I think that was my, maybe you're right. That might have been a slip up, but yeah. it cost her a lot more to do that than it would be for him to do that. In Yeah, in this culture, yes. Yeah, so yeah. just go easy. <laughs> okay, so Jacob now works out with Sierra and Hunter. This was kind of funny. He talks about how he's pretty much his perfect self except for his lower abs. And his legs and his shoulders. So his perfectionism regarding women's peaches and eyebrows maybe is not just just about women. Jacob continues to baffle me. I'm 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 torn whether this is like an Andy Kaufman thing where mm. it's like he's making a joke, like yeah. he's a whole character. Yeah. And he's in on it, or that's actually him. We'll get to that. Well, we're we gonna get to that, but joke. I'm yeah. <laughs> okay, so Sierra and Michael now chat, and we hear her go on about what a zaddy he is. We learned a lot about the Z now and Zaddy. Did. Now we know. A lot of mixed responses, by the way. Yeah. A lot of people were like, this is what it is, and other people were like, this is what it is. And a lot of people were like, I think it's this. So anyway, we I, accept that no one really knows. <laughs> yeah. The general consensus though is that it's swag dad. Daddy. Yes. And so Zwaddy, and then it becomes Zaddy. But you, you like, still pronounce swag with a, a an S, like an aspirin. Right. I think S. if you say it, like, it's one of those words that, like, evolves. Like, you say swad dad, swaddy, 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 zaddy, 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 eventually becomes Zaddy. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> Got it. One take. <laughs> they chat. He says he likes her. They vibe each other. But he takes things slow and he's bad at managing these things. He reveals now that after his wife passed away, he's more guarded. He gets excited in the beginning. But then as the feelings develop more, he gets scared. Sierra says she cannot relate exactly, but she imagines she would miss waking up next to the person. And then Michael says the most heart-wrenching thing, which is that she is spot on. And he shares that after Laura passed away, he started sleeping across his bed. Oh, that really gave me a, a shiver. Yeah, that gave me a shiver too. She says that when he finds his right person, whoever that may be, whoever he chooses, it's not about replacing Laura. Michael thanks her for listening. And then that segues into a kiss. And I've got to say, not only do I think they have surprisingly good chemistry, but it was even a good segue into the kiss, which is often One of the rare segues. Yes. I have a real peeve about people who are just like, yeah, let's talk about awkward things. It's like, 
And okay, yeah, like, like yeah. we all knew this was a precursor to making out. Exactly. Yeah, this felt like the kiss came from what they just talked about. They connected and therefore the kiss made sense. It brought them closer, yeah. both emotionally and physically. And then they kissed. It was great. It was an actual real kiss. Yes, it was so nice. Yeah. Okay, the two of them are really just like, I don't know what I would do without them. Okay, meanwhile, Haley. We mm -hmm. learn more about Haley than we've ever learned before. More than we need to know. Without further context, yes. Yeah. Like nothing against Haley. Haley no. was lovely. But she's down because it turns out she likes Logan, but Logan and Shanae have been spending a lot of time together. And as Haley continues to talk to another group now about vibing with Logan, and Andy, you laughed at the excessive use of vibing. Yeah, I'm not vibing on vibing. <laughs> You're not vibing, vibing? No. She continues to strategize until Logan and Shanae start making out in the water, which is a bit of a, I think, wet blanket on her plans. Mm. Uh, Haley and Logan now chat in what I think has to be one of the most awkward conversations yeah, in these entire really four hours. She says she wanted to pull him earlier. She hasn't seen much of him that day. And he pretty much shrugs while facing forward. Yeah, it's I don't. Rough. I think he's expressing what we're all expressing, which is what's what's there. Was there something there? Well, yeah. Basically, Haley says, "I'm in my shell," and he's like, "You're in your shallow." Like, there's just a <laughs> he didn't hear her properly, and it's just so awkward. It was mm -hmm. like they couldn't get on the same page. He asks when she's coming out of her shell, and she says, "Maybe tonight." She says she'll be chatting it up, maybe with him again. But he doesn't seem to engage or really take the bait here. He's doing his best to be polite, but also completely standoffish. Oh, I 100% think that he was doing this intentionally. Yeah. And I don't think it's necessarily the rudest way to go about it. You know, if someone isn't coming out and saying, I like you, then I feel it's often presumptuous to be like, by the way, I think you like me. I don't like you. Right. <laughs> it's the same way I get annoyed if a guy hits on me out and about or whatever and doesn't just come out and make his intentions known so that I can be like, I'm married. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because otherwise it feels presumptuous to just lead with, I think you're trying to hit on me. I'm married. Right. If he offers to buy you a drink. Yeah. Then or, you yeah, can say, oh, I'm married. Crosses, just so you know, you're, yeah. you're paying you for nothing. Just for some <laughs> chat, maybe. <laughs> some high quality chat. Though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some good <laughs> chat. It's going to be better than average, but that's about it. Yeah. I don't want to presume that that's what you're doing. Right. And I feel like Logan was in a similar situation here. I agree. Anyway, but I have nothing against Haley, honestly. I, I, no, she I seems feel for lovely. Her. Yeah. Now Jacob finds a date card. Mm. He finds a date card. It's for Shanae, and she immediately asks Logan, and he says yes. And in Haley's ITM now, she's teary. She doesn't want to fight over a guy. It's hard not being picked by the guy you have a crush on. In the evening, the group talks about rough accidents and what happened what had happened and a lot of these stories are kind of rough and then oh, yeah. Sierra wins this hardcore oh, by being she's God. like well I lost a pinky finger and Andrew this is so cute he's like that's dope and she's like it's a great handhold and then he holds her hand and he's like that is a great handhold <laughs> How cute was this? This is amazing. They should show more of this. Show this more is... of this. Right? Sierra reveals that when she was five years old, a swing set fell on her and a wow. pole landed on her finger. Rough. And Andy, you were mostly distracted, though, by Brandon's story about a guy sticking a thumb up his butt. <laughs> when I was younger, I don't recall that being part of the... I mean, know. I guess maybe wedgies have evolved. I mean, that's pretty intense. You got to really like, it's not easy to just go and stick your finger up some guy's butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's it's not like the Holland Tunnel. You yeah, just... but you you have a guy friend, a, a platonic straight guy friend who's married who likes to sort of hit oh, his grab friend's my balls. balls. Yeah, yeah, but not like naked balls. Like like we'll be out having a drink and I'll just quickly grab. And maybe your balls this your was pants. through underwear. You don't know that it's not. I don't know if you can st sticking your finger up a guy's <laughs> butt when he's not prepared for it or or interested mm -hmm. in it it's through ambitious. underwear. So I don't think that's the way it happened. I think he was like naked and somehow the guy stuffed his finger up his butt. And I don't understand how that happened. <laughs> I'm confused. OK, so now Logan anticipates Shanae for his date and we get more of Haley being down. And Andy, this is where you said, I feel like this is overblown considering we never saw much of a connection with her and Logan in the first place. Like gun to my head, I couldn't tell you a single thing that happened to her first episode. 
so true. Yeah. That's what, okay, that's why in the beginning when we did our overall thoughts on the episode, some of the beef we had was that they're not actually good at telling the stories that they think they're telling. The reason why Haley would make sense being this down for us would be if we even saw one meaningful conversation between her and Logan in the first yeah. place. Something that set that spark going so we're, we have their, our eye on them at all. In this case, it's we just watched her for almost all of episode two bemoan Logan being into Shanae, but we never even saw the first piece of this. Yeah, we just had to make the assumption that there was a premise to yeah, this. Yeah, we had to take her word for it. We're giving me a lot of soapboxes today. Yeah, Charlene. Andy? I'd be remiss if I did not mention how unbelievably cute you look today. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. And part of that cuteness <laughs> has to do with what you're wearing. Oh, yes. Well, I am wearing a very versatile bodysuit from Frankly. This is not my first Frankly apparel piece, nor will it be my last, but I'm such a big fan. Not your first Frodeo? <laughs> <laughs> what I love about Frankly apparel is that they create clothes so you do not need to wear a bra. And right now I'm wearing an off the shoulder piece. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm not wearing a bra. There's it's no amazing. strapless bra. I can move however Magic. I want. I don't need to keep lifting it back up, which is a thing with strapless bras. Yeah. And it gives the right amount of coverage and just modesty. Isn't that what <laughs> everyone wants? They want the bra without the bra. Yeah. Bras get really uncomfortable and frankly understands that. And they build support and padding and just shape into things. So you do not need to worry about straps and lifting and all the digging in that bras can yeah. inflict. I think they came up with the name because they were sitting around talking about bras and are like, frankly, bras suck. <laughs> Probably, actually. Also, little details I love to mention because these things matter to me. It's women-owned. Mm -hmm. It's a small business. And the founders are Shandies. Last but not least. <laughs> Last but not least. So go to franklyapparel.com slash Shandy and use promo code Shandy to get $20 off your first purchase. Again, that's franklyapparel, F-R-A-N-K-L-Y, apparel.com slash Shandy. Andy, your skin is looking particularly radiant. Yeah. I've been showering in a couple of days. <laughs> Maybe that's the trick. <laughs> or it's your apostrophe tretinoin concoction that you got. It was prescribed to you by a board certified dermatologist mm -hmm. without you even needing to go to and, the dermatologist. And incidentally, I never, even though you've been trying to get me on tretinoin for years, I never would have done it oh my had God, it not I been for even, apostrophe. Now that I know you better, I can't even imagine a world in which you would go and get prescription skincare. No. Never would have. Yeah. Apostrophe allowed me. I'm the perfect customer. I'm the one who never would have done it. They removed the friction of an individual who was never going to do anything for their skin. Yeah. And for me, this is why we're both. We're different, but we're both perfect customers for apostrophe because I'm the kind of person that did get prescription skincare from a dermatologist, but it was actually really inconvenient because I'd be traveling all the time. Meanwhile, with apostrophe, you fill out their online questionnaire and you submit photos of your skin. You take them yourself. They're just selfies at different angles. And you just say what your skincare concerns are. And then a board certified dermatologist reviews your information and then will prescribe you something if they think you need it. And this is a big deal for me as someone who used to have to go to the pharmacy, go to the dermatologist each time. And there are a lot of reasons to go to the dermatologist. Mm -hmm. But if it's something you kind of regularly use mm -hmm. or you, you need to re-up a prescription on or it's something that you think you need, you're pretty sure you need it. Yeah. Why do you have to go out of your way, spend all that money, schedule the appointment, and then get the thing that you knew you needed anyway? And let's be honest, there are a lot of options for skincare out there. And it's very easy to be led astray and to be told you need things you don't necessarily need. And that's where I really trust someone who's a, a dermatologist. Like you can't get more qualified than that in recommending something for someone's skin. So we have a very special deal for our audience, the Shandies. Get your first visit with an apostrophe provider for only $5 when you go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy. That is a savings of $15 and this offer is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and click begin visit. Then use our code Shandy at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. And we thank apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. Logan and Shanae go dancing in town now and Logan tells her that there's no one else he would rather be there with. Logan says that he felt like an outcast for a lot of his life and he sees how brave Shanae was to return after what she's been through. He sees strength in her 
that he's attracted to. Andy, you thought he was very drunk here. But if he was drunk, he's a loving drunk. Yeah, and he was drunk with love. Shanae says that she has butterflies with him and he's fun. He makes her comfortable. She says it's scary, but quote, I see this going really good. And they make out. Genevieve continues to unravel over Justin. We learn she was expecting Sally to be the one to steal Justin away because she'd heard about them hooking up at Stagecoach. The ah, re- so the return stagecoach. of Stagecoach. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Lace is getting ready and sees a suitcase that says Sally in big, bold letters on it. And she runs over to the women and tells them to come see, come see. There's something in our room. And she shows them the suitcase and Genevieve has a huge reaction to this. And there's a lot of, who is she? Where is she? Kira thankfully reminds us all who Sally is. And she's the girl who left Clayton's season before it even began. Right. And now the women... Rummage. Rummage. That's a good word, Andy. They fully unzip her suitcase and dump all the contents out. Which, like, is this is this like <laughs> illegal? I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt and think that they knew that this was a plant, but then they didn't act like they knew this was a plant. Like t- this suitcase was obviously a plant. Oh yeah, the suitcase was a plant. Yeah, Genevieve at some point in an ITM to her producer at some point was like, honestly, the person I thought who was going to cause a shit disturbance was going to be Sally, and then the producers were like, ha ha. Well, the question <laughs> is, is 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 it really true even? Is that actually her suitcase or did oh, they I just prop so. a suitcase? You know, it's unethical no matter how you look at it. And it I don't is. want to be all uptight, but whether it's her suitcase and they all rummage through her stuff, that's horrible. What an invasion of yeah, privacy. Yeah, bordering on a felony. Yeah. <laughs> and then if it's not her suitcase and they put a green vibrator in there on national television yeah. and she's never, she hasn't even been there. She's not even there to defend herself or to be like, that's not mine or whatever. It's just really messed up no yeah. matter how you slice this Yeah, one. this is odd. Either way, this was an invasion of privacy in the meta or yes. real world. Yes. I'm trying to think if like a producer was like, why don't you guys open it? Or was the whole thing staged for this whole long, dumb vibrator joke? A terrible vibrator joke, by the way. Yeah. It was so bad. So they thought bad. this was so much funnier than it Why was. Why is a vibrator that funny? It's only funny if you're like 14. It's like they saw how funny it was when Katie Thurston did it on Matt's season. You know, she came right. out of the limo with a vibrator. I like, go oh, vibrators. Those, those are yeah, funny. Yeah. Let's do vibrator <laughs> stuff. It was so sad. It's like you've, you've nothing, you've no new ideas. Why are you in this business? It's like they had a playbook and they're not they're not adapting to what's actually happening. Yes. They're just like, we're doing this. Yeah. We don't care how things yeah, are going. Yeah, we have a vibrator gag. We are going to use our vibrator gag. Yeah, no matter what happens, yeah. come hell or high water, yes. this unfunny juvenile <laughs> vibrator gag will take up 10 minutes of the show. Yep. Okay, so Genevieve continues to lose her shit here. She says that if Sally shows up, she's definitely leaving. Mm. She says, torture me more. And I wrote, so she's upset at the powers that be? Like, who is she upset at? I don't know. I, I can't figure this thing out. Uh, do they have history, her and Justin? Are they before the show? Well, that's a whole other thing because it did feel like her upsetness over him going on a date with Victoria. As you said later, Andy, it felt like they had been dating for six months. Yeah. <laughs> her it's, upsetness level. Yeah, it felt like they're they're like on fruit fly time. <laughs> <laughs> How long do fruit flies live again? One like, day? Maybe two days. Oh. Like that's like a like a two day fruit fly is like the elder, like he's the wise man of the town. He's like, <laughs> when I was a young fruit fly. This back is what you have to look out for. 17 hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> if you see hands coming towards me. <laughs> yes. God, that's so sad. Can you imagine having to like listen to advice from someone who's only like 14 hours older than you? Yeah, but if you're on fruit fly time, they really are that wise. Yeah. What's the wisest? What's the what do you think the wisest piece of information a fruit fly has ever garnered? Don't go to the sticky tape, even though it smells really sweet and nice. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. You're so <laughs> right. Can I try to be the fruit fly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the, he's like, he's like all he's like wizened yeah, and yeah. he's shaking. He's got yeah. a cane and a yeah. long beard. And he's like, it may seem sweet <laughs> and it may look sweet. <laughs> I don't have a lot of vocabulary because I've only been alive for 24 hours and I shouldn't even speak English at all. But... If you see this, do not go to it. <laughs> yeah. Or at, at my parents' house, what they do is they'll put a little vinegar in a glass and then cover that with saran wrap and then poke a few holes in it. Oh, yeah. And then they go in the hole and then they can't get out. Ooh. So it'd be like, don't go in. Yeah. Don't. I think I think we can we can both 
<laughs> safely say that the wisest fruit fly that's ever lived we'll just warn is people about talking tr- about traps. how not to go to traps. Yeah, because You're that's like, how he lived to yeah. be two days old. Right, exactly. <laughs> the only way you can live to two days is knowing not to go to sticky tape or vinegar cups. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Can we just talk about this and not this yeah. show? I, I honestly, if I don't know if the shandies are open to it, but if you're willing, we can scrap the rest of this recap. <laughs> and I swear it would be far more entertaining for us to riff on fruit flies for the next two hours. And I'm willing to do it. And I'm capable. Okay. So the ladies go and ask Wells about Sally. He tells them the saga of Sally. And now we get this skit. Highlighting Wells' comedic timing, I suppose. It's not remotely funny. I'm not dissing him. Just this whole thing is just really not funny. But the problem with it, this is the problem, is it's not funny, but they really thought it was funny. Yes. You could tell they were like, oh, this is going to be funny. Yes. And it's not funny. It's not remotely funny. There's nothing funny about it. You and I were watching like completely pan-faced I have gotten more laughs, again, as I said last week, out of The Bachelor, Bachelorette, when they're not trying to be funny. This was such an effort to be funny that all I could observe was the effort. Yeah, I was like, wow, to put that much effort into humor and to not land once. Not a single laugh. We didn't laugh at all. You you know what happened here is... (laughs) There was one, two, three. There was a some group of people, probably three or less. Yeah. Um, three or three fewer. Three or fewer. I wasn't <laughs> going to say anything. <laughs> Close call. That had a certain degree of seniority in the general <laughs> production okay. hierarchy. They're pretty and, high and powers like, and the powers that be. You know, and they were like sharing a doobie or whatever. And they're like, this is going to be hilarious. And they were like, yeah. And the people like slightly below them are like, uh, they're like, but don't say anything. You, you might, you might get canned. Yeah. And, uh, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's funny. That that's yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah. Funny, funny. And everyone was like, eh. <laughs> but they couldn't say anything. Yeah. I think that's because what happened. It was a higher up whose idea it yeah. was. Who's going to tell Wells and some, you know, I don't senior think it was even writer Wells's person. Idea. Do you think it was Wells's I don't, idea? Uh, Wells seemed pretty into it. <laughs> If it wasn't his idea, he really embraced it. (laughs) I thought he himself was good. Yeah. But he was working with a script and an idea that was so unfunny. Yeah. It's like putting like Brad Pitt in Snow Dogs. You ever see Snow Dogs? No. With uh, Cooper Gooding Jr.? Oh. It was a very, very, very bad movie. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's giving Wells a lot of yeah. credit to it's say like, that he's Brad Pitt in this situation. No, not Brad Pitt. That's actually not even a good comparison. That's going to be even better. It's like Daniel Day-Lewis. Oh, wow. Or like Anthony Hopkins okay. in Snow Dogs. Okay. Or or a Cruise Ship. I think Cuba Gooding did another movie called like Cruise Ship or something, which was unbelievable. It may actually made Snow Dogs look good wow. now that I remember. Okay, damn. But my point is you put a great actor in that even if... They're the greatest actor that ever lived. They can't make the lines work. Mm-hmm. They can't make it work. That's why it's so detrimental to a really good actor's career to do a really bad movie. That's why they're so careful. Yeah. Daniel Day-Lewis. Never <laughs> done a bad movie. I think half of being a really good actor is curating what movies you're in. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the same thing as being a, 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 a romancer, a player. Half <laughs> a of being a, ro- a romancer. <laughs> Like from like the 1800s. But no, it, half of being a player is knowing who to pick. Yeah. You can't just cast your net wide and just hope. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's just that you know when to hold them, know when to fold them. <laughs> Doesn't really apply, but you get the point. Okay. So this skit is about Sally waffling back and forth about coming, her boyfriend, was like she was still interested in him. Then he says he doesn't love her. She was then finally checked in. She said she was going to do it. She's checked in. Her bag made it in. And then at the last second, she's on the phone with her ex again. And then she's like, oh, I'm not coming. <sighs> okay. You know what? This would have been even funnier if they had just done sepia tone with actual women like not men playing the women. <laughs> like I, I don't know what that they thought that was funny, but it wasn't. I think it would have been funnier if it was like more like a black and white, like noir, you know, <laughs> flashback to what happened noir, with real. That characters. would have been really funny, actually. I don't really think that it's our business. Am I am I being a little too like old fashioned with this? They're trying to justify them putting her suitcase in the women's room, right? Which was 
clearly there to stoke drama and get a big reaction out of Genevieve, who never fails to deliver said reaction. But they, it's like they concocted this whole story. And maybe it is true. Maybe Sally was waffling, in which case I don't think that that's our business. Why don't they just tell it like that? Literally be like, why is the suitcase here? Yeah. Well, Sally, so was, you know, had second thoughts at the airport yeah. and she, she didn't come to paradise, but her bag got here before her. End of scene. That would have actually added way more credibility to yeah. her bag having been there. Yeah. We would have felt not manipulated. Yes. We'd be like, oh, that actually happened. Yeah. That's a thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. Not like some big grand plot point <laughs> that they've sketched out over weeks of meeting. And again, this could have been saved maybe. We maybe might have been okay with the bag being planted there and us being manipulated and all this stuff had the sketch been funny. If the punchline to the joke was funny enough, then we'd be like, eh. And by the way, if the the bag, well, it's not a bag, it's, it's a, what do you call it? It's a suitcase. It's a hard shell. You don't it's, like hard shells. No. Hard shells are, uh, what's the point? Like, what is your bag being thrown out of an airplane? <laughs> like, come on, get over yourself. Yeah, try squeezing that hard shell up in that tight little compartment <laughs> above your seat. Anyway, my point is, is that if they had just left the suit the, the suitcase there yeah. with the name tag on it that actually was good i liked that i liked the whole thought the concept of the suitcase being there but haley not just S left it Sally. whatever <laughs> so it, who cares everyone knew what i meant <laughs> the suitcase is there and ha Sa <laughs> sally. sally you know what's throwing me is that it's sally with an ey and a two l's yeah who spells their name like that you know it's like down by the sally go Gardens. That's how you spell Sally and Sally Gardens. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's a Sally Garden? Sally Gardens is like an old folk song. Oh, it's like it's an the, it's Irish folk song, I think. I think we, we, we might have to get back, <laughs> back on track. We've got about seven hours left. So I like the suitcase. Yeah. And I think it's a great piece. I think it's not. It's a, it's a good joke. Like you keep going back to the suitcase, just sitting there with the name tag on it. I'm okay with that. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. Why do you have to open it and have a vibrator inside yeah. of it? No, it's so true. They go too far. They commit too hard to one idea and they'll just cling to it until they drive it into the ground. You know what it's like? It's like they're following the GPS. Yeah. But there was an accident and there's a roadblock yeah. on the highway on the exit. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like, nope, go right through. They blast <laughs> right through, jump over three police cars and they end in a fiery crash because they're just following the GPS. Mm. They're not looking at the road. Yeah. No, that's good. I like that. I thought I deserved more for that. <laughs> Really grasping at straws here. <laughs> okay, so Genevieve has a million and one mouth agape reactions to this. Last week we said Serene was the mouth agape yeah. reactor, but it's really Genevieve. I am over Genevieve's mouth agape. Oh, yeah. It, it has gotten enough. quite old. Everything. It's like, oh, what's for breakfast today? Scrambled eggs? <laughs> Paired with a, I'm leaving in two seconds if it's not <laughs> yeah. scrambled eggs. <laughs> if those are overcooked, I'm out of here. So in Genevieve's ITM, she says, I wish America could feel what I feel right now. And Andy, you said, a lot to unpack there. <laughs> America's like, hold my beer. <laughs> and as Genevieve cries to her producer, Andy, you reminded us that this is a guy she's literally spent one day with. According to what we're told, anyway. Unless there's... History. history. I like, like knowing. I just want to know. Yeah, it makes they, more sense. It should, there should be a, a like, it's, you know, like in Star Wars, where it's like, dun, 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 dun. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, that's the MGM theme. Yeah. What's the Star Wars? What's the opening? No, that's yeah. Superman. Da, 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 da. No, that's Superman. No? I, I got it. I got <laughs> it. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, wait, wait. Da, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Da, 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 da. Wait, da, yeah, it goes down instead of up. It's the only difference between the opening of Superman and Star Wars. No, that's Superman. Okay, anyway. Damn it. We all know what you mean. It's the text that goes up. How about this? You do the song of Star Wars since I somehow can't. Can't okay, do it right, without okay. singing Superman, and I'll do okay. the words. And here the word the words are coming okay, out of okay, space. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Da, 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 Back at Stagecoach in 2021, Genevieve and Justin. Wait, no, Genevieve. Yes, sorry. Genevieve and Justin had a kiss. It was at Stagecoach. After that kiss, 
They had several <laughs> dates. Da, 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 da. They went to dinner. <laughs> Keep going. I don't know the name. Oh, da, da, Some of these dinners were romantic. Do, At one do, dinner, Justin do, told Genevieve do, that he thinks he had feelings for her. From. You're still going. Da, da, That's good. Genevieve said, I think I have feelings for you too. And then the next day, they went out to an amusement park. And then they stopped talking for a few weeks. And then they got the call from Bachelor in Paradise. And here we are. And that's the end. That okay. is and then it fades out. And then the first scene. Okay. <laughs> Wow, I did not know where the B section of that came from. It just came out of me. That was amazing. Was your musician? Uh, I was like panicking. My heart is racing now. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. I'm very, very proud of you. I did. The sad part is I was so concentrated on the song that I didn't even hear the whole backstory. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it was very bad. You didn't miss anything. Okay, well, Oof. that would have been nice. Yes. I would have enjoyed that. Yeah, it would have made everything more interesting, frankly. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, so at some point, while everyone's still gossiping about Sally, Kira somehow has the green vibrator in her hand yeah. at the bar, and everyone seems to be openly discussing it and touching it, and it just feels wildly invasive and inappropriate. But if it, like, what? Whether it's hers or not. But it's it's a vibrator, like, I don't and it's think not it's even hers. an interesting vibrator. No. If it was like a fourteen inch giant dildo, <laughs> I would say okay, this is funny ish. <laughs> it's like a boring, lame, normy green vibrator. If you went to Amazon to and put in vibrator, yeah. this vibrator would show up first as Amazon's choice. Oh my god, it would be like Amazon Basics. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Where was the comedy consultant on this? <laughs> Where was the person Andy. who's like, that's not a funny vibrator. If you're going to make a whole 20 minute segment yeah. about a vibrator, make it funny. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. They should hire you, Andy, to be their comedy. I mean, consultant. I'm willing. I'm willing to do it. I'll do it even for free to make our job easier. <laughs> Okay, Genevieve, meanwhile, continues to cry and spiral. She tells her producer that she is two seconds from packing. And I think at this point, we're like, OK, <laughs> like, OK, make it one second. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Genevieve now reminds us all that it's her birthday. She just turned 27 and she says, ah. I always cry on my birthday. Yeah. So maybe she's the common that's, denominator. That's here. not surprising. OK. And now Justin and Victoria return. It's Justin now chats with Andrew and Michael. And he's like, I don't know what to tell you guys. The date went really well. He's yeah. like, I really liked her. It was yeah. good. He said that she was all. Which. <laughs> That really? is what she is. Yeah, it yeah. got the point across. She was snappy. Snappy. Andrew says he likes how Victoria challenges Justin, and that's something he's into. I thought this was just funny how Andrew was the same person who was comforting Genevieve the oh, morning. Yeah. <laughs> he's playing both sides. <laughs> Can't trust Andrew. Uh, Genevieve keeps venting about how poorly Justin's handling all this. He didn't say hi to her that morning. He didn't actively find her before going on the date, etc. Michael tells Justin that Genevieve's been moping all day and reminds him that it's her birthday. And Justin's like, it's tomorrow. And they're like, no, look at the time, man. And he's like, oh, yeah. And then he looks like a commercial for like prescription migraine medication. <laughs> He looks really, really upset. I mean, I know that feeling. Justin finally talks to Genevieve and he's like, what a day. Day two. <laughs> <laughs> His use of day two is really great here. Yeah. The wise fruit flies. You know, I've been here already for a day. <laughs> she asks about the date. He says it was fun. He knows she doesn't want to hear that, though. And there's next to no eye contact from him towards her. She basically says she's done. Based on how he handled all this, he reacts strongly to this. And she says, based on how this has gone, she doesn't think she's what he wants. He says he can't just flip a coin. He wants to have conversations and get to know both of them. And she says that he can't do that. He can't do this to either her or Victoria. And in her ITM, she says it would have been better if he would just said he'd rather pursue Victoria instead of her living in this no man's land of not knowing. And she said then in her ITM that Sally will come and it'll be the whole thing over again. And then we see her say in the ITM, ooh, herpes are the worst. What the hell? We rewound this six times. Yeah, somewhere. We there. thought she said birthdays are the worst because we're like, it makes no sense that it's herpes because there is no reference to herpes except her saying that it'll be the whole thing over again. So maybe she's referring to how herpes come back. I, I'm just going to assume that somehow through some sort of sound warp, she did say birthdays are the worst. Yeah. And we heard it as herpes are the worst. 
It definitely was. It, you know what it is? It's like that blue dress versus the. the oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you see gold or, gold or purple blue or, or whatever? Yeah, whatever yeah. it was. Oh, my God. Right now, we're going to insert it. I'm inserting it. Ew, herpes are the worst. Okay. It sounds like herpes. How many people think it was herpes? Yeah. How many people hear birthday? Yeah. yeah let's do a poll. <laughs> birthday or herpes? Can you do that? Happy herpes. Does that sound right? <laughs> Could that ever happen? Anyway, finally, this conversation ends. It's not on good terms. And then Romeo and Jill now talk. Jill expresses wanting to just watch everything unfold. And then we hear Romeo say in his ITN that he doesn't want to commit to a relationship on day two. Mm. He says, quote, it's paradise. We're not here to make friends or to find a surrogate sister. Mm, we're just here to cry a lot. <laughs> Romeo then pulls Brittany. And Andy, you were delighted by this because yeah. Brittany last week was your this person was, you would go th for. This was the crossover I was waiting mm -hmm. for. This was I was living for this. I, I stand this crossover. Yeah, except it did not come to fruition the way you might have hoped. No. No. He says he's wanted to talk to her, but he doesn't want to devastate Jill. But hey, would she be open? <laughs> and Andy, you're like, he's kind of assuming that she would be. Yeah. It felt maybe that Romeo was a little drunk on the power of having the rose. I, I like think, he felt yeah. invincible. I, th I think he also got a little bit obsessed with his namesake. <laughs> I think he felt that he was Romeo. Mm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he wasn't. <laughs> Brittany's sort of smiling awkwardly at him and he misreads this and he starts to go in for a kiss and then she morphs it into this goofy oh. hug that is so painful. She says she doesn't want to be involved in a second love triangle of his. Oh dear. I, and, and I have to say, I am not a historian of Bachelor in Paradise, <laughs> yeah. but I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that this is the first, what do they call it, swerved kiss? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I feel like it isn't, but it's very rare, especially when the person going in for the kiss is the one with a rose. Yeah, I don't think I recall yeah. seeing ever before a kiss rejected on this level. His interpretation of this exchange is that Brittany is interested, but she would want Romeo to talk to Jill first. Meanwhile, Brittany in her ITM is like, he dove in for a kiss. It was a huge turnoff. I'm not interested. I'd rather get hit by a bus. <laughs> So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> Brittany promptly goes and tells Jill what just happened. And it's very clear very quickly that Romeo did not gauge friendships properly before doing this. Romeo. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? Like, did you not see them talking, sharing breakfast? Like, it looked like their bunks were next to each other. Like, yeah. they looked really close. This is a miscalculation. Oh. Big time. Yeah, very rough. And here, Andy, you thought Brittany wasn't getting a lot of attention because she's too classy. And yeah. hard to get. Hard to get, yeah. People don't want to put in that much work, but you're in fruit fly time. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, she takes a whole like 72 hours. You'll be you'll be 24 hours dead by then. If, if you're lucky. Yeah, if you're the wise if, yeah, old you, man. Yeah, if you listen to your elders. <laughs> yeah, the village uh, elder. Romeo keeps trying to talk to Jill now. Jill's losing her shit. She's like, whatever you're trying to do, forget it. Good luck. Bye-bye. And he yeah. follows her for a while. And he's like, okay, I'm leaving. And then she's like, yeah, go, have fun, yeah. bye. She really lays down the law here in oh, a way yeah. that we really enjoyed. Yeah. Andy, you could not stop marveling at Romeo's poor game, both in terms of trying to approach Brittany, but also trying to do damage control with Jill. It was just sort of a disaster. I got to say, um, I love Romeo, big fan. This is not his place. No. He is not made for paradise. Oh, no. And well, unless he's the kind to get shacked up on day two right if, and if, commit to that yeah if it was right away and it was smooth sailing fine but any sort of drama on paradise mm. romeo's not built for this and it's a testament to him like yeah. i'm actually giving i'm romeo i'm speaking to you now <laughs> i'm giving you a compliment yeah you're not made for paradise probably means you're a pretty good guy yeah now romeo cries and looks sad and distraught on the beach and we are team jill in this we agree that she really shone here or as you would say <sighs> shone she shined. She shined in this moment. It was just really powerful to see her be like, okay, yeah, like, I, I gave you a second chance. Not interested. Bye-bye. Yeah. Full disclosure, not a huge fan up until this point of her. Oh, yeah. Of, of hers? Yeah. Wait, of her? Of her. How do you say that? I, fan always, of her. I'm a fan of her. Or a fan of hers. Of hers. I never, I, it's one of those her things. Fan. It's like respite or respite. I always get confused about this. <laughs> What is it? Is it a fan of her or a fan of hers? Because it, I'm I'm saying I'm a fan of her. That sounds right to me. If yeah. I say I'm a fan of hers, that means that she's a fan of me. 
No, it's a fan of hers. It's the possessive. It would be like, you are her fan. I have fans. They are fans of mine. So what does I'm a fan of her mean? What does I'm it a fan of works. her? It also works. I think they both so work. So both work. <laughs> Ooh, that actually saves me a lot of stress going forward. Was I always, every time I say this, I, I get very stressed out whether I'm saying it right. I don't know what it is. I think people are going to chime in to tell us that we're wrong. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I... I'm fanning. I, I I was not fanning no, on Jill ever. You were not ever. vibing, Jill. I was, <laughs> thank you. Now I'm suddenly uh, yeah. a little bit of a fan. This yeah. was a big move. It was. She's like, nope, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Very she, theatrically, actually. It was entertaining. She did this right. Yeah. Okay. And it is finally the Rose Ceremony Cocktail Party. There's some talk at first, but nothing's really interesting here. The gist is that Romeo's a laughing stock and that he's going to have a hard time digging himself out of this one because, I mean, yeah, he's, he's none of the true. women are interested. Yeah. Okay, so Jill and Casey talk now. She says she feels hurt and bamboozled by Romeo. She says that she gave him a second chance and Casey's like, yeah, Romeo kind of showed his hand. Casey's like, forget the past. What does the future look like? He asks what she would want if a genie popped out of a lamp. And Andy, you're like, a lamp? No, I didn't get that. I thought it was a it was a bottle or a, or a You're or a, or a, a genie decanter. in a bottle. Oh, a, yeah, genie in a bottle. Yeah. Okay. So genie in a lamp. That's from Aladdin. So this is where your Disney. It sounds familiar, but I think of a lamp as a thing that lights. It's like a lamp. It lights things up. Yeah, but it's shaped like uh, it's more long and and like it. It looks short. like a decanter. It's like a thing you pour yeah. like like tea out. I think of. you put like hot oil in it or something, and then the flame. So just to be clear, you're saying that the word lamp applies to a a uh, a metal decanter yes, that yes. holds oils. Yes. Okay, so there's a different word synonym for the lamp that you turn on yes. to light a room. Yes. I did not know that. Do you want to break into a song from Aladdin? Where should I start? Uh, 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 Go, I can uh, show. Uh, uh, I, I can show you the world. Uh, uh, I, 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 I can show you the world. <laughs> Shining, shimmering, splendid. Shining, shimmering, splendid. No. <laughs> No? You just showed your cards. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know the song. That was cute, though. Okay, well, I'll do, we'll do one part. Okay, so I'm going to say a whole new world. And then you say, don't you dare close your eyes. Okay. Oh, I like that part. Okay. I love that stuff. A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that was too that was much. Scary. Oh, do it again. Do it again. A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. A dazzling place I never knew. What kind of place? <laughs> Is that what he says? I really got a bone up on my Disney songs. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll move on. We'll move on. We tried. We tried. We tried to give you singing, but Andy doesn't know Disney. So I can admit, Andy, that it took me a while, longer than it should have, to get on the CBD train. But now that you're on the train, isn't it a comfortable ride? It feels very comfortable. <laughs> no? Bad? <laughs> Puns aside, feels has done... A lot for me. It's helped me getting centered, taking the edge off. Mm. It's helped me with sleep. Yeah, they say CBD is all about what you're not feeling more so than what you're actually yes. feeling. It's what it takes away. And in my case, it gets me a little more out of my head. It takes away a little bit of my anxiety, which really keeps me from being able to fall and stay asleep at night. And look, I am the kind of person that relies on a cocktail of things. Like I can't get used to any one thing every single night. So I need to change it up all the time. But feels is really in my rotation. It's one of the top two to three things that I use on the regular, like every couple of nights to keep my body guessing, but also to take that edge off where I'm able to fall and stay asleep. You know what makes me even more sold on feels is that I don't feel like something is happening. I mm. feel like the absence of something yes, is happening. Totally. I just hit the microphone with my nose. <laughs> That's how much I agree with you. <laughs> But there's nothing quite like throwing mints in your bag and just having them with you on the go. I gave my mom the mints. Did you really? Yeah, she loved them. Oh, that's nice. Helped with her sleep. Oh, and let us not forget that a huge part of CBD, and I think a roadblock for a lot of people with CBD, is dosage. It's not self-explanatory how much you should take for what, and Feels knows that, and they have a CBD hotline, so you can actually talk to a real human being to get feedback on how much you should use for what. So start feeling better today with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com 
com slash Shandy and you'll get 40% off your first three months plus free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash Shandy to become a member. And get 40% automatically taken off your first three months plus free shipping. That's feels dot com slash Shandy. Andy, I see some layering going on over there. Yes, even I do layer when the fall rolls around. <laughs> yeah, the fall. Yes, the yeah, fall. We're officially into October. No longer the summer months. And that's why I'm such a big fan of Faraday because sometimes dressing for these like mid season, like as as you start layering more and more, it gets complicated. And Faraday understands that. If you are lost in the sea of season change, Mm. Faraday is there for you. Yes. And their clothes are unbelievably high quality. And I love that they always keep sustainability in mind. In fact, their clothes are made truly to last a lifetime. They want each of their pieces to be your favorite piece for a lifetime. And with that comes, I'm not kidding you. I'm not making this up. It sounds like I'm lying, but I'm not. A lifetime guarantee where they will repair your item for life if you have issues with it. For life. I, and I'll tell you, I believe it. I have never owned shirts that have such durability. Mm. There were no, you know, I always, every shirt I've ever gotten, even expensive, cheap, it always has eventually some string hanging off mm-hmm. of it somewhere. Yeah, or buttons sort of tumbling down. Yeah, I have yet to see a string yeah. hanging off of any Faraday shirt I have. They truly care about quality. You can tell. It's family owned and you can just tell. You can tell that there's real humans behind creating and manufacturing their stuff. I have a fair shirt upstairs that I purchased way before we started this podcast mm. and I've worn the crap out of it yeah and it looks brand new if, and feels <laughs> brand new yeah if anything it looks better because I really do think their clothes get better with age I agree Faerty is the fine wine of flannel <laughs> Nice. Thank you. So right now, Faraday is giving our listeners, the Shandies, 15% off every order. And yes, you heard that right. It's 15% off every order, not just your first order. So head to FaradayBrand.com slash Dear Shandy and use code Dear Shandy at checkout to get this deal. That's code Dear Shandy at Faraday Brand, F-A-H-E-R-T-Y Brand.com slash Dear Shandy for 15% off FaradayBrand.com slash Dear Shandy. Romeo interrupts this conversation with Casey to talk to Jill. She accepts. She tells him that she's been so hurt by him. He doesn't deserve a conversation with her. He says he didn't choose to hurt her, Mm. which has been a cop out. Yeah. That's a cop out. No one chooses to hurt someone unless they're choosing. Well, yeah, that's like that's a it's an in. What is it? Oh, intent versus impact. I think intent matters, but it's not a cop out. It's not like, well, it wasn't my intent. So the impact doesn't matter. Yeah. He hurt her. If he didn't think it would hurt her, it was short-sighted of him. Agreed. She says it didn't matter. He did. She says it's one thing to pursue something else. It's another to do it right in front of her face. He says he doesn't know what to say. He wanted to pursue Brittany, but he was just afraid to ask her. He asks if he gave her a rose, would she accept it and stay? And she says that he should explore his options. This door is closed. It is done. And we were impressed. Yeah. Wells in his ITM says men are faced with a good decision button and a bad decision button in paradise. And not only does Romeo keep pressing the bad decision button, he wonders if Romeo even knows if there is a good decision button. Wells was Wells got some real wisdom this episode. Mm-hmm. Romeo now chats with Haley. He says, you are such a joy of sunshine. <laughs> you are such a happy of chocolate. <laughs> Andy, you think Romeo is very drunk here. Yeah, I think so. And I, I would be drunk too if yeah. I was Romeo. Yeah. He says he has a good feeling about Haley and she's like, no, sorry. <laughs> That's rough. It's like, <laughs> it's like the dark side of paradise has <laughs> descended upon Romeo. It's like everything that could go wrong is mm. going wrong. He chats with Kira. He says he regrets being so close-minded early on while she just glares at him. He says he wants to rekindle things and she says she has a hard time trusting him. She's not going to be so quick to forgive. So now Romeo starts to cry. He apologizes for how he treated her and now his crying moves over to the bar where he's now crying to Haley. And Andy, here you said, I'm not sure if he's crying for himself or the situation. Yeah. It was sad. (sighs) I think it was probably a bit of both. I think he felt sorry for himself, but he was also, I recognized in his tears that feeling of regret where you wish you could go back 24 hours and just do things differently. Yeah. I think he honestly, it was a cry for help for the most part. I Mm. think he could have held back the tears. Mm. And you know what? Sometimes it feels good to have a good cry. Yeah. (laughs) You don't agree with me? I'm trying my best to just... Respect my man, Romeo. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, this is where the credits are. This is the cliffhanger. 
No, yeah. Romeo, yeah, things go things go up. In yeah, episode, yeah, yeah. In episode yeah, three. Things can't get worse. Basically, it's bloopers from the Sally sketch with Wells. This is the credits. Andy, you said the problem is these aren't funny because the sketch itself wasn't funny. The mm. blooper is the sketch. Yeah. That sketch should have been put in the blooper reel. Oh. They shouldn't have even shown it. Oh my God, you're so right. It would have been actually much funnier yes. in that setting. It would have been like, we almost did this thing, but we're, we, you know, we know better because yeah. we're professionals. So now it's a blooper reel. Yes. Instead, they're making bloopers on a thing that wasn't funny that should have originally been in the blooper reel. You can't blooper a blooper. <laughs> okay, so now it's episode three. We pick up with Serene saying she thinks a lot of people don't know where their roses are coming from. This is still the rose ceremony cocktail party. It's still happening. <laughs> Casey says that morning he could have told you where every rose was coming from, but now everything's in disarray. Romeo is still crying and Wells in his ITM quotes Shakespeare. Mm. Excellent quote. Excellent quote. A fool thinks himself to be wise, but a wise man knows himself to be a fool. The world Ooh. needs to hear that, not just Bachelor in Paradise. Yes. The world needs to hear that quote. Mm. Isn't it funny that last week we were saying Romeo's quote about the crucibles on which true love is forged? That that could have been a quote of Shakespeare's and now a yeah, real quote of Shakespeare's yeah. is being used on him. Yeah, Shakespeare's bitten back on Romeo. <laughs> He's like, don't tread on my turf. <laughs> we see a lot of women talking about being interested in Jacob, namely Lace, Haley, and Kira. They all seem to think they have a shot. Haley talks to Jacob. She says he's a hot commodity and they make out. Mm. Lace talks to Jacob. She says she'd literally like to further their connection. <laughs> so so <laughs> in an endless ocean of inappropriate literallys mm. in this franchise, yeah. this may be the absolute, this literally <laughs> may be the worst usage of literally I've ever seen. Well, I read that literally is now not to be taken seriously. Well, it's like, um. Yeah, well, literally is now not used literally. I will say this. I don't care what they say <laughs> about literally. This hurt my soul uh, when I heard yeah. this. That's the thing that hurt your soul? No. no. <laughs> Thank you. Good. You're right. They also make out. And now Kira talks to Jacob. She blindfolds him in the boom boom room and surprises him by being dressed as Jane with leaves covering her strategically. Mm -hmm. They make out. He seems very into this. And then Kira and Jacob emerge with Kira dressed in her leaves outfit. And everyone acts all horrified. Yeah, like she's so exposed. <laughs> well, it was funny. Victoria F. was like, oh my God, my eyes. Like I can't. But if you actually think about the amount of coverage, it was the exact same amount of coverage yeah. as Victoria walking down on the beach the day before. Well, also <laughs> there's like at least two dozen black boxes throughout this episode and they don't even black box that. So mm -hmm. how exposed was it? Yeah. ABC was okay with it. It's but true. apparently everyone was offended by the exposure. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But we're really coming around with Kira. Yeah. I don't know what this show would be without her, frankly. I agree. I, I question her general uh, judgment in going on the show. Uh, I forgot, actually, speaking of which, we, we forgot to touch on the scene with her at the Boom Boom Room with the where people are like, what happened to the vibrator? And then she's closing the door. I Like, I don't understand why she wants to do that, but I also... I don't know. I feel like my awe of her being a doctor and playing this part has subsided. Yeah. And now I'm like, well, she's clearly that character contestant and i'm okay with it somehow i trust kira's choices i don't because i assume it's because she's a she's a harvard educated doctor but I'm, I'm gonna just assume that she knows what she's doing yeah well maybe it's because she's a harvard educated doctor that she's like i don't give a shit You're i can right. do whatever i want maybe this is her fetish remember you know we talk about fetishes you know like someone who's really powerful doesn't have a fetish where they're like dominating someone. Oh, yeah, they have yeah. a fetish where they're like getting peed on or something oh, yeah. or getting beaten up like dress as a baby. <laughs> Maybe Kira, this is her fetish. She's like, I'm so tired of being all this buttoned up doctor and having to be so yeah. professional. I want to just be like just a mess. I want to relinquish control. I'm going to yeah. be a contestant on a trashy it, reality show. Yeah. Where, and be the trashy one on the yeah, trashy yeah, reality yeah. show. And in which case, power to her. Yeah, yes. she should put that on her ZocDoc rating. <laughs> <laughs> what thing but that she was a contestant on the bastard in paradise and she was the one with the vibrator <laughs> <laughs> like oh. so jacob and kira now toast to bad decisions with good people oh. michael and sierra serene and brandon teddy and andrew and Brittany and casey are all seen canoodling yeah. i the Brittany and casey thing could we please see some of that 
literally Britney's only purpose was to be hit on by Romeo and Casey's only purpose is to be like platonic friend and advice giver to heartbroken women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not that interesting. Victoria F and Justin chat. He's, he asks if he gave her the rose, if she would legit want to see things going somewhere. She says, of course she invited him on the date. Didn't she? She says he should explore his options, but also don't. <laughs> She's joking with this. She then shows a little vulnerability and says that she really likes him. This seems to melt him. And Andy, here's where you said she's a siren and Genevieve is a car siren. <laughs> it is amazing the contrast between how Victoria plays this conversation with Justin versus how Genevieve does. That said, it's not like Victoria got his rose. So maybe. Yeah, but that's more about Justin than Victoria, mm, I think. We'll get there. Okay. So Genevieve and Justin now talk. He surprises her with a birthday cake and in his ITM says that she doesn't like chocolate. So he got her a vanilla cake with a little bit of chocolate. <laughs> But when we saw the cake, we decided that it looked like it was chocolate. All chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> he says the way the last conversation ended, it felt all in, all out. And he wants her to know that he does care about her. And she says, but that's what I didn't know. She basically gives him a hard time for not showing he cared. And then she says she hasn't gotten any validation from him. And meanwhile, he's just looking at the cake he just brought her. Yeah. It was a good, uh, it was a good nice. mic drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he says he did make an effort to talk to her before going on the date. He, you know, he defends himself, basically. In general, we just couldn't stop marveling at how much better Victoria played this. Oh, yeah. So Victoria, meanwhile, is like, well, I need a backup plan. Yeah. She's playing this like Survivor. <laughs> she is. And she's doing a good job. She Great has job. her backup alliance. Yeah. With Johnny. She's, she's, she's no fail. She knows she's making it to the next round. Mm -hmm. She makes a move on Johnny, even though he's mostly paired up with Hunter she opens with a callback to him not knowing her name, to him calling her Caroline, which was, I thought, brilliant. Mm -hmm. And they go chat. And Andy, you said Victoria's got the best game on the island. No doubt. Well, people are going to come after you for saying it's an island again. <laughs> it's a callback to last year's recap. It's islandish. <laughs> Victoria and Johnny talk. She says she's into him. She says she's nervous around him. Mm -hmm. And he says he's nervous. And Andy, you said she's out gaming Johnny. <laughs> Victoria and Johnny start making out here. And of course, Hunter is like, oh, yeah, I <laughs> poor, mean, Hunter. poor Hunter. Casey is with Hunter. And he says, do you want to go to the bar and not be in eye line of the horror? And Andy here, you called Casey the Nick Vile of the season. Definitely. He's the platonic guy yeah. friend as hunter feels terrible and uncertain we hear johnny saying to logan on the beach i mean they're both beautiful girls <laughs> zeroing in on the important facts <laughs> okay so now it's the rose ceremony andrew gives his rose to teddy brandon gives his to serene he gives her a little speech about how much he likes her and andy you said god their whole thing is like a self-indulgent hallmark card <laughs> Well, I wouldn't be so judgmental if I didn't think that they had previous history. Like they clearly are the like there's a wicked witch of the west, wicked witch of the east. Like mm -hmm. Brendan and and Piper yeah. were the wicked witch of the west. This yeah. is the wicked witch of the east, but they clearly had some relationship before this show. Yeah, and they were just lucky that they were both cast like they both came out in the same week. They didn't have to lead anyone on exactly. to get to the point where they like met they, each other. They were they were hand fed the story and and they've embraced it, but it's like come on. We know <laughs> You're not fooling anybody. You can't stick your finger up our butt without us knowing the fingers in our butt. <laughs> Michael gives his rose to Sierra. Logan gives his to Shanae. Casey gives his to Brittany. Jacob gives his to Lace. Ooh. He says, I believe you are as stunning as you are iconic. I wrote, it feels like he knows of her. Like her reputation yeah. preceded her. And it also feels like, look, do I, I don't know. I just, I guess I just don't buy the romantic chemistry there. No. And it does feel like Jacob might be Jacob's a friend Jacob. of the producers. And maybe he was like, do you have a preference? And they were like, if, if you don't care, we'd rather you go for lace. But That's how it feels. No diss on lace. I just don't buy this. Jacob's taking the path of least resistance to Instagram clout. Like, I don't think Jacob's in this for romantic connections of any duration. Mm -hmm. I think he's just in this to make Jacob as big a Jacob as he can be. As big a Jacob. Justin gives his rose to Genevieve. And Andy, you said all that bad behavior got rewarded. He felt bad for her. It's a sympathy rose. I don't know if I think it's a sympathy rose. I think it's a I want to look good rose. Oh, but yeah. It's the same thing, I guess. Yeah. Two sides of a coin. But yeah. You're right. I think that to get back to what we were saying at the top of this recap, there's that awareness of how you're going to come off. Yeah. And he knows that if it's Genevieve's birthday, she's been moping around all day and blah, blah, blah. She doesn't feel validated. I think that he, he wanted to come off looking good. I agree with you. Yeah. 
it's just hard to believe that he was like, wow, I see a real future based on how the last 24 hours have gone. It's almost impossible for me to believe. Yeah. I have more respect for Justin than that. <laughs> Johnny gives his roast to Victoria. What we laughed about here is how he didn't care about how no. he came up. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I've been shacked up with Hunter this whole time, but I think Victoria's hot, so I'm going to go there. Yeah. Romeo gives his rose to Jill. He apologizes, said he made a lot of mistakes. He wants the rose to be a fresh opportunity for them to repair their relationship or for her to explore new connections. So it's a quasi-friendship rose, and she accepts. So Romeo did give Jill that rose. Do we think that this was similar to Justin giving Genevieve the rose and that it was like... I want to make myself look better because later on we learn that he still wants to rekindle things romantically, but he also sort of frames it as if you want to use this to go date other people. I, I think Romeo realized that was the right thing to do. Mm. It was the only move for him. To it was redeem both himself. to look good on the show and to be a good person. Yeah. I no. don't think he did the right thing. But I, I mean, let's be honest. He got himself in this situation. Oh, there's no question that Romeo created this situation for himself. Mm -hmm. I both respect his taste because I do think <laughs> Britney's a good call. <laughs> yeah. And I was wondering why no one was going for Britney <laughs> out in the open. Yeah. He broke the cardinal rule of Bachelor in Paradise, which I'm going to try to say succinctly, but it's a little complicated. You can go for the friend of a person that you've been connected with previously but that friend also has to be clearly into you and betraying their friend yes. for you to do that. Yes, yes. And this actually could be applied to real life too. Yes. This could have turned into a blossoming love story if he had chosen someone who clearly reciprocated his affections right. and wasn't closer with the person that they would be betraying than he is with her. Yeah. And then they are with him, I mean. And he did not pick wisely. Yeah. Britney was not the right call. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was like when you play video games, you always like to explore every single nook and cranny, even though you don't have to. Yeah. You don't like to just keep going forward. I, I like, like to just run yeah. forward and forget about no, all the little because things. Because oftentimes in that nook and cranny, there's a, a treasure chest. Yes. But I think that Romeo was just doing what you did in the game. He's just mm. looking. He's like, oh, I didn't explore this little thing over here. Yeah. But what was the connection with Brittany? He was just like, oh, let me clean this up first before I continue oh on God. with Jill. It was one of those treasure chests. This sometimes happens. It definitely happens in Zelda Breath of the Wild where it looks like a treasure chest. You go out of your way to find that treasure chest and then you open it and it turns out to be a monster. Oh, yeah. So not only you're not only not getting what was in a treasure chest, yeah, you're but you're now punished. you have a battle that might not even be easy to right. fight. And that's exactly what happened. He <laughs> opened up a treasure chest of a monster. <laughs> But good taste. <laughs> it all comes back to you being right. You're yeah. like, I told you so. Good something. taste, Romeo. <laughs> okay, so uh, going home are Haley, Hunter, and Kira. Mm -hmm. Not super surprising. I was sad to see Hunter go, though. Yeah, I was I was starting to have feelings for Hunter. I liked Hunter. Okay, so it's the next day, and Jill is saying there's no way she would go back to Romeo. And we get a bit of a recap of who the couples are. So basically, we're seeing Genevieve and Shanae get set up for this impending double date. Of course. Aaron and James, a.k.a. the police chief and the... District attorney. The district attorney. Two-thirds of the police department rolls in. Yeah. And if anyone wants to come at us and be like, Aaron's not a police chief. And James is certainly not a district attorney. <laughs> this is a callback to last year's Paradise Recaps. We are aware that this is that this is not what they do for a living. It's a it's an ongoing joke. If you don't know what's going on, you can go watch those recaps. But we will continue to call Aaron and James the police department. Yes. Whether you like it or not. Yeah. We see a shot of them flexing for each other and generally thinking they're funnier than they are. Mm -hmm. The ladies see them come in and call them Tweedledee and Tweedledum, which feels accurate. Mm -hmm. In general, the ladies do seem interested and the double date card reads, end the bromance, start the romance. Aaron pulls Genevieve. He says he's interested in her. She seems to light up at this. She's quick to mention how she's been talking to Justin, but he just went on another date. So dot, yeah. dot, dot. Aaron now pulls Shanae. They sit and he asks... Who do you think is interested in me? <laughs> Enough about me. Who do you think is interested in me? Uh, Aaron just never stops delivering. Oh, yeah. She says there's no word on the street yet. There's a lot of hype over Genevieve and Shanae competing for Aaron. We get, yeah. a, we get actual flashbacks to their 2 on one on Clayton's season. Mm -hmm. That's how tired this is. Yeah. Aaron asks Genevieve and James asks Shanae. They both say yes. We didn't even see James talk to Shanae, by the way. Nope. Justin seems a bit miffed and says it's hypocritical what I, Gen Genevieve look, is doing. Look, I, I can't disagree. And ordinarily, I would say, of course, Genevieve is exploring other options. It's paradise. I mm. mean, of course. Why wouldn't she? But she just 
<laughs> put the guy in the cross yeah. for doing that with her. Yeah. And they sorted it out. She got her chocolate birthday cake. Granted, it wasn't vanilla. He tried. <laughs> and now she's doing the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Jacob and Lace have an interesting conversation now. They're talking about what countries they've been to. He says he went to Hong Kong for his 22nd birthday, and she asks why he chose Hong Kong. And he says, not Hong Kong, China. <laughs> and reveals Hong Kong is a strip club in Tijuana. And Andy, I mean, there's so many things to unpack here. I, I, would, like, I would like to just have a, a moment of silence for comedy. Oh, my God. Okay, let's just, just one moment of silence. Okay. Well, Andy, you were concerned that this was a joke he'd actually set Clearly, up. Clearly. He set this joke up. He had been preparing this joke. Oh. And this is unbelievably unfunny. <laughs> it makes the sketch of the whole Sally situation seem like a Judd Apatow movie. Mm. I mean, this is bad stuff. Yeah. And I question, now it's becoming very Andy Kaufman-esque for me with yeah. this Jacob thing. I don't know if Jacob is pulling a full character here. Like, he's actually like, I'm going to be the guy who's an airhead. All I talk about is superficial stuff about women. I make terrible jokes. Like, I don't know if he's committed fully to that character. And Jacob, the actual human being, you'd have a conversation with him. Be like, oh, you seem like a perfectly normal, not unfunny. Mm, I think he is. I think this is him. Okay, but I am still on the fence. But that joke threw me. It threw me both ways. Yeah clearly prepared there's no way that was just off the cuff there's no way that he thought that was a normal thing to say yeah it's clearly a setup joke yeah well especially since the countries he had just listed were actual countries right yeah so is he setting that joke up saying like oh this is a hilarious joke everyone's gonna get a kick out of this or is he setting that joke up to say like i am furthering my dumb blonde caricature yeah i mean i don't know which is it but her reaction was perfect. Oh, this her reaction made me like her so much oh more. Oh my god. It was it was so I my Lacey went from like it's a lace, zero to a lace. hero for me. Lace. Oh, sorry. Lace <laughs> went from a zero to a hero for me. Yes. It was perfect. She was just like like no react just like ugh. really? Yeah, like this her is what you're doing. Her expression was a full blown ugh. Yeah, like I'm repulsed by yeah, you. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. And it's funny. I feel like it was meant to seem like she was repulsed by the fact that he went to a strip club. No, but I don't think that's what it was. She was repulsed by the joke. Yes, it was that bad. It's like, what are you, three <laughs> and you have a bad sense of humor? Okay, so the talk around the town is still about Shanae and Genevieve, their conflict from Clayton's season. On the date, everything feels fake. <laughs> that's what I wrote. The couples <laughs> play chicken and even the people splashing them in the background feel like yeah. actors. They're oh, just like, ah. oh, yeah, it's like, it's like it, there's literally like a sign. It's like an applause sign. It's like splash. Like, yeah, there's no other couples playing. They chicken. weren't reaching them with the water. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so there's a taco eating contest. No one else seems to be participating in this contest. What was the point of that contest? What were they going to eat all those tacos? And meanwhile, the ladies seem to bond over how well this is going while the guys dance performatively, I wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all that hype about Shanae versus Genevieve, nothing comes of that. Again, more bad storytelling. The yeah. reason why that would be interesting to point out, you know, it would be interesting to point that out if then we get a real friendship moment that shows them connecting. Yeah, but it was just like neither it nor. It was just like, eh. Yeah. Exactly. Back on the beach, Justin and Logan seem depressed while they lay around, but Andy, you were sure that they were just taking naps from all the drinking. <laughs> Back on the date, Aaron and Genevieve talk. He says that they have great chemistry and they pretty much agree that they want to see this through. Mm. She says he compliments her a lot and she likes that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I almost respected how upfront this was. Yeah. I don't know a single woman who doesn't like being complimented, no, but it's like one it. thing to just be like, I want to be complimented a lot. I like that you do yeah. that. You know, actually, I wrote, it feels like a very Aaron thing to say. So maybe they're a good fit after all. Yeah. And they can just compliment each other. Yeah, endlessly. I think they may work. They make out very intensely here. And in her ITM, Genevieve says she likes how Aaron shows her he's into her. Mm -hmm. Unlike somebody. <laughs> James and Shanae talk and he says, how is this date going so far? She says it's effortless. He asks about Logan. She says she likes Logan, but she feels it's so easy and effortless with him. She can shake her ass in front of him and not feel judged. He says, yeah, they skipped a few chapters for sure. They kiss here and... Their chemistry, I've got to say, was surprisingly decent. Yeah, I was surprised as well. Yeah. Okay, and now we see a shot of Logan eating his parfait bowl. 
And we hear Shanae say that there are things she doesn't like about Logan. Mm -hmm. And in her ITM, she breaks down because she feels really bad. Yeah. Hmm. Seeing another side of Shanae. Yeah. Back at the beach, Jill continues to shut Romeo down. She says this ship has sailed and it's reaching the Middle East right now. (laughs) Okay, so speaking of rehashing and recycling old content, Mm -hmm. we now get a visit from Ashley, I, and Jared. Yay. Friends of the show. Friends of the show. We love Ashley, I, and Jared. If you you didn't like Ashley, I, and Jared, watch our love fest and you'll like them. If you did like them, watch our love fest and you'll like them a lot more. Yeah, I'll link it right here. They now have adorable baby Dawson. I have nothing against them being on the show. I guess I'm just tired of recycled material. Yeah. That's what I'm tired of. I'm th- I think they're probably tired of it, too. Well, I don't know if they're tired of it. Well, they got paid. They probably got paid. They got a free trip to Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. If that. I were them, I would be like, yeah, recycle never, me away. Yeah. No one ever gets tired of free trips, <laughs> no. ever. No matter how rich or famous you are, a free trip is always good. They're basically there to talk to everyone and remind them that paradise works, okay? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Logan says, this beautiful couple walks in, this beautiful girl, and I have no idea who it is. <laughs> We found this hilarious. It was yeah. refreshing. Logan's, Logan's good. Yeah. The couple toasts the group, says they're there to chat and to listen. And so now Ashley, I, chats with the ladies. Jill tells her that she's tragically alone. She's skeptical it's going to happen for her. And Ashley gives her a pep talk and a hug. Teddy says she likes Andrew, but she's not all over him the way she usually feels in relationships. And now Rodney arrives, who we just met the other day, by the way. We did. We met him on Thursday. Lovely fellow. Lovely fellow. Exactly what you expect him to be. He is exactly Rodney. (laughs) There is no difference. Rodney does not have a dark side. If he does, (laughs) he does not show it publicly or privately. I don't know why you think we would know his private side. (laughs) We got to know him well enough to know he has no private side. (laughs) Okay. He's resistant to saying who he's into, but Jesse pulls it out of him and he finally admits he does want to meet Teddy. Lots of hype around Rodney arriving. We're sold that all the women are into him. Yeah. And Johnny in an ITM very unconvincingly says the girls definitely gravitate towards him people got to be nervous yeah <laughs> you found this hilarious <laughs> it was clear he was prompted to talk about what a threat rodney is but you could tell uh, johnny does not see rodney as a threat whatsoever I, I johnny is they got to find more johnnies <laughs> they got the whole island should be johnnies rodney pulls jill Jacob says, finally, she gets a good man. A zinger from Jacob. Yes, this was his funniest moment of the entire four hours. And Jill tells Rodney she wanted to meet him. She's very single. Mm -hmm. Rodney pulls Teddy now, and the focus definitely is on Andrew, seeming a bit down about this possibility. Teddy, meanwhile, tells Rodney she was hoping to meet him there. He seems very into her. And Teddy, after speaking with Rodney, goes and sits alone and cries. And you can tell it's like a secret camera filming her here. And in her ITM, we hear her reveal there's something missing with Andrew. And she cries that she feels bad. He's so amazing. She just feels bad. I got to say, I appreciate how Teddy... There was, she didn't try to make this about her. She didn't no. find a group of girls to cry to and have them all comfort her. I guess I really related to this. She found a place alone and just mm-hmm. cried herself. It was not performative. Yeah. You know this what I mean? This was not for show. No. Teddy asks to talk to Andrew now. She does not look happy. She no. looks like she's been crying. She says she knows deep romance means so much to him. She knows he wants affection and she wants to give that to him. And she doesn't know why she can't. And she's not sure if it's the environment or something's missing, but it's not fair to him. Andrew says he doesn't want to force anything. And he says, here's the thing. We gave it our shot. I'm not mad at this. Okay, so now it's the evening. Lots of speculation over what happened with Teddy. Where's Teddy? And meanwhile, we see Teddy talk to a producer and say she just wants to leave. And the producer's like, you just want to disappear into the night and not say bye to anyone? And she's like, yep. The only person I needed to talk to is Andrew. And I did that. And then she just takes off. And we agreed that this was badass. (laughs) This was so badass. I was Amazing. so impressed. Because usually if you do get someone leaving in the night like this, it's because they've been humiliated or shamed or yeah. like ostracized in some way. And that's not what happened here. She did not want a second more of airtime. And she knew that it was hers for the taking. She was like, yeah. please, I just want to get out of here. Yeah. She got the, the gold medal Irish goodbye. <laughs> so I did a lot of research on that because I was like, is Irish goodbye offensive? 
Yeah, and you it have to assume that, it's offensive these days. Yeah, right? you do. I don't think it is, actually. It's not. It depends who you talk to. If you talk to an Irish person, it certainly isn't offensive. Yeah. Well, and like, isn't that the person that should be the one who's, who's, offended, who's uh, is the person, yeah. conferred with about yeah. this? No, it's true. Okay, so I did a little research on Irish goodbyes. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I found this great Thrillist article that I want to quote. Because I think some people would see this as rude. Quote, the Irish exit is not rude. It's a sign of emotional intelligence, of candor, of self-assuredness. It means you know where you stand with everyone else, that you have some semblance of awareness. It's the rare burst of succinctness and selfless subtlety so uncommon in modern human interaction. You are choosing not to hold everyone back by abandoning your own self-serving goodbyes. That's a good thing. Beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. I'll link it below. I thought it was a great article. I could not agree more with everything said. And anyway, Serene is told the news by Wells. And the gist is it's so shocking. She didn't say goodbye. And in general, this made us like Teddy way, way more. Oh, yeah. We already liked Teddy, but this made her skyrocket to the top of our list. Absolutely. And Andrew, meanwhile, does not take the news well when Serene tells him. He cries to Michael, who comforts him. There's a lot of crying. And yeah. Rodney, meanwhile, approaches the group with his date card. And he's like, do you guys know where Teddy is? <laughs> <laughs> Serene and Jill reveal that Teddy left and Rodney looks shocked. And that is the cliffhanger for episode three, Andy. Okay. I mean, that was exhausting. Yeah. It was tiring. We like Teddy. And you know what? I, I will say this final comment on Teddy and Andrew. I think that Teddy, like her name, is a Teddy. And I think there can't be two Teddies in the relationship. With oh, because Andrew is a Teddy. Andrew is also a Teddy. <laughs> too many Teddies. I really like Teddy. This was a real moment. I had a yeah. real moment with Teddy here. She felt bad and yeah. she did not make it anyone else's business. She wasn't go- trying to get attention or rally women around her to comfort her, to talk her through it. She knew herself. There was a real like inner compass happening there. And even a producer was trying to kind of like guilt her yeah, or yeah, shame yeah. her. He was like, you're going to leave without saying goodbye to everyone. Yeah. And she's like, yup. Yeah. I want out. I want out of here. I got to say, you know, her exit confirmed something that we've been told by someone on this season. We won't say who, but apparently this season was awful to be on. Yeah to film. Mm -hmm. It was just awful. It was so much manipulation. It was so controlled. Every conversation was controlled and you can feel it. You can see it. I can see why Teddy was like, get me out of here. Like you can really see that the contestants are not happy. They don't seem happy. Yeah. They seem like tense. Yeah. You don't really see these big goofy moments with each other that not often anyway. It's not relaxed enough. It needs to be in the wild. They need to just let this be. Yes. And and then cut it down to a show. The drama will follow. People yeah. will get in fights. The work is in editing the final raw. Yes. It's not in creating the raw the way you want it so yes. you don't have to edit it at the end. Totally. Exactly. Well put. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get through this, Andy. Do you have an A game winner for episodes two and three combined? Victoria. Okay. Ooh, our first female A game winner. I love this. I think she deserves it. Flawless game. Flawless game. She had a backup plan prepared and it paid off. She did every, uh, there's so, I don't want to get into every detail, but everything Victoria did was how you do it. Yeah. And for Word Watch, Andy, there were zero margaritas. Amazing, right? Shocker. There were 72 correct guesses. Mm -hmm. And our winner, of $185 in Feels CBD tincture, which is an exciting gift, goes to Perry Siegel. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Congratulations. Yay. Very good prize. Yeah, yeah. Solid. Okay, so for next week, Andy, for episodes four and five, what word would you like everyone to look out for? I'm going to throw some red meat here. Okay. Vibing. Ooh. So not vibe, not vibed. It's vibing. Only vibing. Okay. Because otherwise, we're going to be here forever. So if you would like to join in the Dear Shandy Word Watch Fun and have a chance to win, once again, we have our amazing prize. Da, 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 da. You can win $185 in Feels Premium CBD Tincture, which we're big fans of. Oh, Andy's going to take some right now. I use it to sleep at night. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. 185 bucks. This is our highest value prize. And we thank Fields for sponsoring this giveaway. You have a chance to win by correctly guessing the number of times vibing 
is uttered in episodes four and five combined. If you guess correctly, you will be entered in a draw and that one name will be drawn and that person will win the grand prize of $185 in feels CBD. And you must submit your guess by this Friday at midnight. And Perry, you as well, you must email us by this Friday at midnight to claim your prize. Okay, Andy, who would we go for based on episodes two and three? So I'm still thinking of Brittany. Mm. But I don't know a lot about Brittany. I mm. didn't learn that much more about her other than she has the ability to turn down a kiss on Bachelor in Paradise, <laughs> which is quite an athletic maneuver. From someone who has a rose. Yeah. So last week I asked you if you had a long term and a short term. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, based on what I know, that Brittany <laughs> is my long term. Okay. And Victoria has become my short term. Okay. I can see that. I respect that. Yeah. Victoria has tremendous game. Yeah, yeah, I was one over. Yeah, she's very compelling to watch. And I'll be honest with you, I saw little bits of her season. Yeah, and I wasn't a huge fan. No. Yeah, <laughs> but I've been. I've been. Well, turned. that's what Paradise is all about, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Redemption. For me, my who I would go for is still Michael. I'm keeping it at Michael. I respect that. Yeah. To be honest, the selection for me is kind of going downhill. <laughs> Like I, Casey, I didn't like Casey more this week yeah. than last week. No, yeah. I kind of want to see Logan like emerge. I want to ha see him become the butterfly that I know he is. And I think that he's surrounded by bigger personalities than he is. And I don't know. He's kind of getting lost in the fray for me. A so, little bit. He's also playing it really safe. You can tell Logan's very keenly aware yeah. of his edit. Yeah. He doesn't want to be the bad guy ever again. Yeah. And he's very careful. Yeah. Which kind of takes away a yeah. bit from his flavor, I think. Yeah. So for me, short term and long term, I would say Michael. All right. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys have a lovely future together. <laughs> short and long. OK, I think that's a wrap then, Andy, for this grueling recap. Oof. We survived. I'd like to think that Paradise gets better towards the middle. It like, did uh, last year. I think it's going to get better. Yeah, it got way better towards the middle last yeah. year. Yeah, it okay. always it always hits a bit of a lull around here. Mm -hmm. We just have to make it aware that it's hitting that lull. <laughs> OK, if you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify podcast ratings and reviews and generally do all of the things that you would do to support a podcast. Mm -hmm.